Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining Utah Beer News for the latest in our one-on-one -on -one conversations with local brewers, breweries, and everyday imbibers. I'm Tim Heron, founder of Utah Beer News, and my guests for this episode are Chad Hopkins and Matt Yeager of Hopkins Brewing Company in Sugar House. Welcome, guys. Hey, Tim. How's it going, man? Pretty good. Pretty good. Thanks for taking the time to talk with Utah Beer News. Uh, before we get started, uh, if others in the beer industry, since this is a relatively new thing that we're doing over here at Utah Beer News, if you're interested in participating in an upcoming episode, please feel free to send me an email, tim at utahbeernews.com, and message me on social media. All right, let's get started. Um, now, Hopkins Brewing opened at the very end of 2018, and Chad and I have visited multiple times before. In fact, uh, there's an article and podcast episode on utahbeernews.com right now that gives the backstory of Hopkins. So I invite you to go and check that out. Uh, one thing I want to say about Chad, though, uh, before we dive into all the cool things that uh, he and Matt have going on at Hopkins Brewing, is Chad is just a, a tremendous advocate for craft beer in Utah. I mean, he's always out there supporting other local breweries, posting pictures of all the delicious beers that he's drinking. Um, it's just, it's very cool. Um, so, He's also a trailblazer, you know, uh, in some of the collaborations and partnerships he's developed, uh, guest taps, featuring local musicians at the brewery, beer pairing meals, uh, partnering with other small businesses. Uh, it's just a really cool vibe all around at Hopkins Brewery. So I'm really excited to, to talk to Chad and Matt about what they've got going on in the near future. Uh, let's, uh, let's start with, uh, with you, Chad. What's, uh, what's going on at Hopkins right now that we need to know about? Um, we're staying busy. We've come through this, uh, COVID thing and we're doing great. So, um, it's kind of a wild couple of years for us <laughs> opening a business, um, kind of getting things under control in that first year. And then, um, right when we start to feel like we hit our stride, then you know, kind of get shut down there for a bit. So, um, the thing has been really good. Um, you know, we've been able to, support local music since they haven't had venues um, we've had live music almost nightly uh, you know and uh, some breweries have um, you know like bewilder um, you know those guys really helped me out as a as home brewer with salt city brew supply you know and they opened up just a couple months before the pandemic um, you know so we've just been able to help out our friends and um, and sell their beer here as well um, since we do have a bar license, we can sell high point beers from other breweries. Um, so it's been a lot of fun because we've been, you know, our first year is like, oh, we're so limited by just having draft only. Um, we're grateful for getting the 5% um, rule. But, you know, instead of us trying to have our own high point beer, it's like there's so many great breweries here in Utah making great high point beers that we're good friends with. Yeah. Um, you know, and to see, our little town of Salt Lake blow up like it is um, with craft beer. It's pretty amazing to me. So I'm just, I'm very excited about it. And that's, that's really why I want to promote it. And, you know, yeah. we, want to, and we, we welcome more breweries. And, <laughs> you know? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. You uh, talk about Bewilder. They opened up, like you said, just almost exactly a year after you, you opened up the very end of 2018. They opened up the very end of 2019 and then, yeah, March of 2020, things kind of took a turn for the worse for a little while. But uh, it seems like we're getting closer to uh, snapping out of this and having pre-COVID beer drinking experiences again. Is that kind of what you're seeing or hoping? Yeah, it's getting pretty close to that here. You know, we're, we're almost there, um, you know, with vaccine being available now. Um, it's just, it's nice. It's good. Like we're, we're all ready to come back and sit at the bar again, shoulder to shoulder with our friends. And... Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, one cool thing I want to uh, uh, talk to you guys about is your small batch Friday program. Uh, I know that's something you started, Chad, and uh, Matt's really, it sounds like, taken on a, a, a large role in, in some of these batches um that happens every other friday at hopkins brewery the next one is scheduled for march 26th right or is um, it ne is it next week tomorrow tomorrow yeah yeah tomorrow <laughs> yeah, so that started out as like bringing my homebrew system here and my old kegerator and i'm like oh we'll do some experiments down here and i did you know a little bit of trainings on it 
Yeah. Um, and then Matt just spearheaded it, going after it um, with his own recipes and um, doing what he wanted to do with it. Um, and so now that's that's all Matt. Uh, we're drinking Matt too right now. I'll let him talk a little bit about about what he's doing, but he's doing some fun stuff, and it's always always really fun to drink his interesting beer. So yeah, yeah, Matt. Let's uh let's talk about uh kind of your philosophy when it comes to doing these are they still five gallon batches that you're doing yeah so right now um we have a 10 gallon system so i basically do double batches and uh i'll either split it up to have like two different beers out of one base or uh with things like lagers that take longer i'll do a double batch of that so they hang around a little longer um but yeah i'll just kind of whatever kind of weird idea comes to my head of you know oh, did anybody do this and kind of check it out and nobody did it and it's like all right well let's just give it a shot you know right yeah and how long have you been doing this program has it been a year now maybe a year and a half i think yeah yeah okay. i think it was yeah uh the every other friday um i think since our first anniversary we've been doing that so okay. So, yeah, a little over a year at this point, about like a year and a half, yeah. Okay. And yeah, for those who don't know, uh, every other Friday at Hopkins, you uh, put these out on on draft for people to try, and they're really interesting recipes and concoctions. But can you talk ab- about a couple that might be coming out tomorrow that uh, people can look forward to? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so the one I have right now, it's uh, the Red Velvet kind of like an amber base um and then i uh brewed it with vanilla uh cacao lactose to give it like a little sweeter end okay and then to give it like a really vibrant red color i add a little bit of beets so it's pretty interesting it's definitely one of the stranger recipes that i've done but it worked out really well it's Uh, delicious yeah the in my opinion the the beet flavor doesn't come through like a ton there's like a touch of earthiness but mm-hmm. it kind of balances out all the sweetness between like the vanilla and the lactose so i think it works out really well and then uh right now chad's got uh the malted trail pale ale which is uh one of my personal favorite pale ale recipes that i've made it's just kind of like a classic uh west coast like really malt malt forward and then some moderate bitterness and a lot of uh like citrus notes between like the aroma and then the taste too. Um, and this one I actually use a different yeast strain uh, than what I normally use. So uh, it's got like a little bit of juiciness to it, almost like a, a West Coast, East Coast, Northeast uh, hybrid type of thing going oh, cool. on. Yeah. So that one I'm like really excited about. Um, yeah, I just think it's so awesome that you're able to, to you know, have the freedom to be able to do this kind of stuff. And it sounds like the public's probably really uh, latched onto it. And, and uh, you know, I, I talk to people who are looking forward to the new concoctions every other week. And uh, yeah. it seems like you have between six and eight every, every other Friday. Is that about right? Yes. Yeah, so we used to do eight and uh, now it's six. Um, just cause we always have like a house seltzer and a tonic on for doing cocktails. Right. Yeah, he came up with the uh, uh, tonic recipe. Uh, cocktails so we've got tonic on tap um we've got seltzer water on tap um uh, that's so great for making cocktails very so, cool very cool and another, one thing i want to mention too that's fun about these these batches is it's um there's some experimentation that goes into it like this uh malted trail that did the same recipe but just two different yeasts okay. and you can try that back to back like there's a new um wallaman that he used in this one um that he's telling me about it's like oh try the different and they're like two completely different beers so it's really fun to do with the 10 gallon split it up and make like one adjustment and kind of see how that impacts the beer right right yeah. and there have been a couple too that have uh, graduated to the big time right haven't you uh, oh, yeah. put some on on the full system to to put on on tap uh, more on a regular basis yeah yeah we had a few there was uh the you can't do that on television ipa was uh-huh. the first one to hit and that's kind of like a really malt forward uh west coast ipa it's 
really heavy on a Munich malt, which is uh, fairly unusual for an IPA. Usually it's yeah. more base malt. Uh, so hence the name. And then uh, we put on the Rye Pilsner. Uh, oh, that was good. Which is like a really mellow beer, uh, like hot wise at least. And then some earthiness from the rye. Mm -hmm. and then the last one that was on was the aromatherapy. And that's a double dry hop blonde, which I kind of came up with that idea as a joke. Just like, <laughs> you know, it's like, all right, like uh, double dry hop blonde. Like, yeah. It sounds cool. I, fact, I, that, yeah I had that one last time I was into your place. It was, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. it was interesting. Yeah, I liked um, it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We got a lot of uh, good reviews about it. So it cool. worked out really well. Cool. No, I just think that's so awesome. Um, yeah, yeah so uh, in addition to uh, what you've got going on with the small batch stuff, Chad, anything uh, new or exciting that uh, people should be on the lookout for next time they visit Hopkins? Um, so we've got music almost nightly now. Um, you know, Tuesday, we have trivia nights where you can win a gift card, and that's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, but um, some of my favorite nights are, are uh, actually my favorite nights, probably Wednesday, was because we have a, a jazz jam. Oh. So you have students, professors, um, just a bunch of music nerds in here that love, love to play. So we have our house quartet that will play for an hour and anybody can sign up and wants to come jam with the band. So that's fun. So you get some like really unique music in here. Um, and it's just, it's a great time. So, um, and we're going to be starting to, now that COVID's starting to ease up a bit, we're going to get some pint nights, uh, some charity stuff coming up really soon. Um, be on the lookout next month april 17th we've got something coming up um you can see it on our instagram okay but yeah we want to start getting back into what we were doing pre-covid yeah yeah it's it's a it's about time it's been a long and i'm sure for you it's felt like years and years but uh, uh, <laughs> it's, it's always going to be like short term it's just like okay still still yeah. here yeah. no man you guys are just killing it and uh i i really enjoy visiting Hopkins Brewery, uh, it's a great place in Sugar House and uh, lots of good beers. And like you said, lots of good entertainment and just things to do. I mean, um, you've really d developed kind of a destination brewery, I think, for for people to come to uh, to try out new beers on tap um, and then just enjoy the vibe that you've got going on there. So uh, congratulations on, on what you guys are doing. Thank you, Chad and Matt, for taking the time. Before we end this episode, um, I want to remind everyone that... Uh, Utah Beer News sends out a monthly e-newsletter. Uh, it's jam-packed with news and notes from around the Utah craft beer scene. It's currently delivered to uh, hundreds of subscribers the first Thursday of each month. So I would love if you joined the list. You can subscribe at utahbeernews.com slash subscribe. One last thank you for Chad and Matt for taking the time to hop on this virtual tap room. And I can't wait to try tomorrow's small batch beers. So thanks, guys. Thanks, hey, Tim. Thanks, Tim. Cheers, Cheers. Matt.